the staff members, the faculty members uh, from uh, the area of uh, information technology, finance, legal studies, marketing, human resources, psychology, who are present here, yeah. and the students over here, the research scholars. It's a big moment for us, of course, and uh, our delight is multiplied when we have with us Mr. Yoss. Uh, so a grand welcome to him and Mr. We also have Professor Sharda Nandran with us and uh, by Dr. Sumiji with us. So grand welcome to him also at uh, So uh, we uh, some time back uh, extended an invitation to Mr. Yoss to visit this institution. And we are very, very thankful to him. He is a very busy person, but uh, he took up uh, some of his uh, precious time and he decided that he'll be visiting Balastali. And we are really thankful to him that uh, he kept his words and he is there with us today. Uh, he came in the last evening and uh, actually he's uh, traveling to different uh, places in India as the first uh, a university in India is visiting and uh, his organization Woodsaw doesn't need an introduction and uh, it's a very big organization uh, in the terms of the service to the uh, mankind the human beings is making uh, doing uh, about 10,000 nurses serving people and uh, uh, they are the leaders in the Netherlands of course, you know, India has a very good association with the Netherlands. Uh, we have so many corporate who are there and there are companies like Unilever. And we all use their products and we uh, very happily use them. And uh, 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 we are very happy that Mr. Yoss is here. And I would just try to briefly uh, introduce uh, uh, you to Mr. Yoss uh, before requesting him to make uh, a presentation about uh, what uh, the company does, what the organization does, and his message for all of us. Uh, uh, Mr. Yoss would be happy to get introduced as a nurse who does his work and also helps simplifying organization structure in healthcare. He is committed to encourage trust in organization while integrating simplification in making daily work more meaningful and sustainable. The passion and duty towards the nursing profession motivated him to leave a top position in the organization to start Woodsaw on principles of trust and zero hierarchy. You know, very interesting and so fruitful. The efforts paid off well and today Woodsaw is the largest nursing organization in the Netherlands. He has received the 2014 RSA Albert Medal for his work as a founder of Woodsaw, a transformational new model of patient-centered community health care focused on facilitating and maintaining independence and autonomy. Mr. Yoss works with various national health service organizations in the UK and supports some pilot projects in London in collaboration with Public World. He is confident that results in UK to can be better both in quality and quantity when the primary focus is in health and social care is on building trust and relationships. So we really admire this. We are grateful that he was kind enough to accept our invitation and embrace the occasion of Independence Day. And uh, I would like to thank him on a personal note. I uh, really believe that he's a very good human being. We are also working on collaborating for the purpose of further uh, taking up our mission of women's empowerment. And I wish and pray to God that in the time to come we are able to achieve it. Now without uh, without taking much of the time, now I would uh, request uh, Mr. Yoss to please uh, uh, give a presentation and give his message to all of us. Mr. Yoss. Impressed. We went to the uh, New Alliance and uh, I also did a, a pilgrimage, so um, I feel almost at home, I feel at home, so I'm very happy to be here. And I want to tell you 
my story, why I became a nurse, and, and why I decided to build this organization, and what it's um, where it led to. So, um, and afterwards we will have some discussion, I hope. So, it's of course in the uh, Dutch context, so with the Dutch history in healthcare. Uh, so, but I think you already are informed a bit about your organization. Okay. So, uh, the title of Humanity of Bureaucracy. Okay. This is better? Yeah. Um, but what I saw in, in healthcare, and it's happening in a lot of countries, is that there is too much bureaucracy, uh, which leads to frustration with professionals. So we build organizations and we build systems and structures, which leads to um, too many administration. And we should focus on, I think, what we should do is taking care for patients. Um, we also make organizations very complex. So and I think when you really um, focus on the purpose and you really focus on what's needed, then you can think, make things more simple. So I, I come from a little village where the life was very simple. And when I became um, a student, I studied two year economics. My question was why do we make things so complicated? So I quit, at the end I quit my study economics after two years. And the TEAL organization, I will tell you a bit more about it during the presentation, is that there is a movement all over the world that we should um, think about in a different way. Of course, Shada it has an important role in that thinking. But there are also other ones who think that organizations need the next stage in development. And it should be less uh, hierarchical and less bureaucratic. No? No, no, no. Done? Oh, okay. Um, I worked for my, myself um, f since 1980 as a nurse. So I quit my study economics. I had this something like uh, you can call a depression. And I decided to become a nurse. So, and a lot of people said, why should you, with your uh, intelligence and your background, become a nurse? And I said, I feel good in taking care for people. So, and it's very meaningful if you can contribute to someone's health in a difficult period in someone's life. I have two brothers who are also nurses. So, we are a family with a background in nursing. Um, it also means that I spent my life since 1980 mostly between women. So, and that also gave me a lot of wisdom. So working between women is a privilege. So I'm very happy to be here at this university for the biggest university in the world for women. So that's 97% of the nurses are women within Dutch. So for me, it feels very comfortable to be between women and of course also between women. <laughs> I think we all have feminine and masculine parts in ourselves. Um, I started because I had a position, I was director of innovations in a home care organization and I saw that this organization became more and more complex and the nurses got more and more frustrated about their work. So I, my idea was we need another way of organizing uh, and we need an, also another way of delivering care. because. In Holland, care became more and more product. So the services, we were selling services instead of helping people. And that was a big difference. So because of my ethics as a nurse, you want to help people, you don't want to sell products. So the profit of the organization became more important than serving the people in a way that they stayed independent. So this was a few reasons. I started in 2007 with one team, so my idea was if we can create small teams, I'll tell more about it later, then they can organize themselves. And I started to work again myself as a nurse. I did a lot of evening and weekend uh, work to reduce the costs. Because when you start a company, 
you have to think about how can we uh, get break even. Huh? Yes. So um, it, it was again focusing on the community. So home care uh, in Holland, we had a background in primary health care, and it became more and more home care, and home care became selling activities. And I said we should focus on communities and try to focus on networks in communities. And um, so I, I called it again community care instead of home care. Uh, we started to work closely together with GPs uh, and other uh, networks in the community, um, volunteers, families, all the resources you can use to make to support people in their in their health and in their problems. At the moment, 2016, we have 10,000 nurses uh, all over the country, and they're working in 850 independent teams. Uh, we have a revenue of 360 million euro. Uh, we don't have a financial director, so I'm doing it myself. Uh, this two years of economics was enough to understand what's needed, and we still have the the, the form. Uh, the forecast and the results on one page, so it's so you don't need very complicated financial uh, reports. I think um, we have 45 staff at the head office who are taking care for all the administration, uh, and that's an, an average organization with the same uh, amount of people. It's it's ten times more, so it's so we. We said that we only will do at the head office, we make everything as simple as possible and we only will have to staff what's really needed. Because if you can reduce the costs and the overhead, you can spend it on the nurses. So that's also an economical choice. And at the moment we are dealing 70, with 70,000 patients a year. So in all over the country, at the moment we have, um, if you call it a market share, we have market share of around between 15 and 20 percent. So it all happened without any marketing. So we did all we did was based on free publicity. We got a lot of attention from a lot of people. Uh, as I already said, I was not satisfied the way healthcare was organized in Holland. So I wanted to change the way we were thinking about healthcare. So there was too much fragmentation about on cure, care, and prevention. There was a big standardization on uh, activities. For example, if you if you ask a nurse what's nursing, then she will probably say it's helping people with the skills I have. But nursing in Holland became uh, nursing, nursing special, nursing extra. You have personal care, personal care extra, personal care special, and all these products had different tariffs. So it led to a, a very complex way of organizing and administration because all the organizations were saying if you get uh, this amount for nursing or nursing extra, then it can done be it by nurses. But if we have personal care and the tariff is much lower, then we will hire a lower educated person. So patients got confronted with very many different people. Uh, sometimes there were uh, 40, 50 people per month coming at people's houses. So that's, uh, and then you can't build a trustful, trustful relationship. Um, what you saw that the, one of the consequences was that the quality went down because of the system and the costs went up and everybody got frustrated. Patients, nurses, and the organizations, they call themselves professional organizations, get more and more layers, so more management layers. Uh, one, two, three, four, and then we got a CEO, and then so it was, uh, in my opinion, it was going the wrong direction. And if you look at the information, if you, if you say, my experience was when I started to work as a nurse, that I learned a lot from the nurses I worked with. So we were sitting, every week discussing the patients and then you heard about the experience of your colleagues and then this way you built knowledge. But if you looked at the way we organized it, the knowledge and information that came out of the systems was, was none. 
It was only about the money. So we, we knew how much money we spent, millions, but we didn't know if it led to solutions. So I think that was, in my opinion, not very smart. So in 2007, we, we said we were going to simplify things. We are, we did, I think that uh, nurses are very good in organizing. Women are very good in organizing. So why don't we let them organize everything themselves? So if, if he just makes small groups of 10, 12 people, and they focus on the neighborhoods, five to 10,000 citizens, they can build their own networks, they can organize them themselves, make their own schedules, and make their own agreements with, with the clients, with the patients. And that's what I did. Um, they take care for their own education. They know what the financial results of the team are. So they, they are very, very self-organized. And we just say we, we are just going to follow this. And if it's needed, we will do something. But if it's not needed, we don't. So the staff on the head office is built on what, what's needed. So we didn't have an HR, HR department, for example. We said, perhaps there are problems based on HR, and we will see. Then we will. So very practically, we built our own tools, our own uh, practices based on our experiences. And this is what, uh, what I wanted to focus on again. And it's, if, if you are a nurse, you are focusing on the patient. Um, and he said this, this patient had had life as has a history and as has a network, a family and you have to know and all these nurses they have their own informal networks so they, they also live often in these neighborhoods so they know the culture, they know the background <coughs> these neighborhoods they all have their own history sometimes centuries so they if when you come out of the same Place, then you know these histories, which are very important in how to deal with informal networks. And if you look at this, at, at the community, at the neighborhoods, then there are many resources you can use to support people in their independence. So my vision also for the future is to, to create healthy communities so and to empower people to do the things they can do instead of focus what people can't do. So creating independence doesn't mean that people have to do everything themselves. But uh, what's, what they're still capable at is that, that you're supporting that. So I will mention some nice examples later on. So it, it needs more skills from the nurses. Network creating, empowering people is something different than only doing bandages. It's, it's more... Um, it's more interesting, it's more inspiring to work this way. So nurses are growing every day and when they discuss all these things together, what they're doing, they learn also from each other. So, that's, uh, so this is what we call the onion model. And it's funny to see that it's a simple thing, I think. But you see it now all over the world, it's shared and it's seen as something special. Well, I think it should be very normal. And if I what I learned up till now about the Indian, uh, your history, that it, the, the whole thinking about families and, and how to create uh, support should be very normal and should fit. If you look at the organization, then we said we build we build a lot of system and structures, which um, gives the feeling of nurses that are not trusted and. There is not any reason, I think, why you should not trust nurses. I, I don't know any nurse who starts the morning and says, today I'm going to do my work in a terrible way. So most of the time, just people want to do good. And I believe that if you focus on the good things, good things will come out of it. So, so we, we said we want to, uh, to give the nurses optimal autonomy and, and uh, we want to reduce hier hierarchy. There can be hierarchy between people because based on their knowledge and experience, but it's natural. And it's not based on power of or, or 
uh, are key in the, in the negative way. Then we also wanted to reduce complexity and we built our own IT systems. So we said the IT we wanted to support this wasn't there at the moment. So we said we're going to start our own IT company. So, and we did it together with the nurses. So we, we asked the nurses, how do you want to be supported? How, do, how, we can, how can we reduce your administration? And what you see is that we have a lot of 50 plus nurses and they didn't were very familiar with the internet. And now they're trying to find all kind of knowledge on the internet and saying proud to their children, see how I can handle this iPad or this, uh, this tool. Um, every team takes care for around 50 or 40, 30, 40, 50 patients at one time. So that's, then you can oversee everything. So everybody is responsible for four to five patients. So then everyone can handle the things. The generalists, they, they can take care for everything, every type of patient, terminally ill patients, uh, patients with chronic diseases, patients who are discharged from hospital. So every patient in the community can be supported by these teams. And, and they work very closely together with HMPs, with the, the doctors. Um, the education level is much higher than all the other organizations because, what I already mentioned, the skills you need to work this way um, are much more and much bigger than just doing tasks. It's asked a lot from the nurses. They have their own education budget, they can decide on what kind of education do they need and they make their own programs. So they also can decide where they do it. We have also our own programs on our, on our web. One of the ideas that also try to avoid uh, formal structures. So we said informal networks are much more important than formal structures. And then the, the teams get a training on uh, solution-driven interaction methods. So we say if the teams are facilitated in how to solve problems, they can solve problems, a lot of problems themselves. They can um, ask for a coach. We have also coaches, 20 coaches. And these coaches support the nurses when it's needed. So when the teams are, uh, for example, when there are some conflicts in the team and they can't solve it themselves, they can ask for a coach. And then you get these kind of teams, this uh, typical Dutch team. <coughs> Very happy. This is one of our patients. We have a whole, she's now 105. She's uh, it's an old picture living in Rotterdam for I don't know who have ever been in Holland but <laughs> Rotterdam is one of our bigger cities not as big as your cities but it's the world's biggest port it's the world's biggest port <laughs> yes yeah, <laughs> okay. it's twin cities Rotterdam and Amsterdam yes. they consider themselves not as twin cities <laughs> when you're in Amsterdam it's better to say not so nice things about Rotterdam and yeah. <laughs> let's say. I always say when I'm in Rotterdam that the teams in Amsterdam are not doing so well. So and then the teams in Rotterdam say, oh, I don't know. Um, these are the <laughs> different types of things. Yeah, but what we try to do a lot is to uh, put some humor in the way we are working. So we try to celebrate things and we try to um, make things more relative. If, if, you, if you make things heavy, then it becomes a burden. So you should think, make things lighter. The, the work is very serious. If you deal with terminally ill patients every day, then the work can be quite hard. So the organization around should be light. <laughs> uh, these are the different points I already mentioned. Uh, it means that every nurse every time again has to think about do I have the right skills to deal with these patients. So there is a lot of reflection. Um, we monitor the outcome, so we said this production driven way of organizing is not very useful. So we, what we try to do is to get data out of what the nurses are doing and to learn what the best practices are, for example. So then we can spread this knowledge between the nurses. The nurses, they have 
what we call a team compass that can compare their results with other teams so they can see if they're doing well or they're doing not so well. I already said here yeah, the high education level is uh, important if it comes to quality. And then we, we measure the satisfaction of the clients. So that, uh, every uh, client who has an, um, is discharged gets an exit interview. And we do every year we do a national review on satisfaction. And from the start we had the highest satisfaction in the country. If you look at how, to, how the teams are supported, then I already said we had just 45 people in the back office. We don't have a management team, so we just sit together when it's needed. I don't write policy plans, I don't write strategic plans, I write a blog. It's called Jost the Blog. <laughs> That's my pedant with a G <laughs> at the end. Uh, and then I get a lot of response from the nurses. So sometimes I just write what I think what's useful to share. And then a lot of them say, ah, perhaps we should do this or we should do that. And then it creates another ownership also with the nurses. They're taking care for um, the, the bureaucracy. So the billing is done from the head office and all the administration is done. And the, of course the salaries we have now, we, have, we don't have only 10,000 nurses, we also have 4,000 care workers. So we are now 14,000 and they're taking care of all the salaries and administration. Well. So that's, um, that's the most important thing, what's, what's happening on the head office. And it's a very modest head office, um, if you usually say, an organization with 14,000 people, and then you see sometimes a very uh, expensive head office. We try to keep everything very modest and to see that the money has to go to the, the teams and the, the clients, the patients. This is the way we, we thought about our IT. Um, we said all the basic things have to be uh, arranged in a way that it leads to um, less bureaucracy. But at the same time we want to uh, get data out of what we are doing to make it um, practical for, for example, for, for best practices. To show what best, best practices are. This is transparency is very important. We use the, what we call the Omaha system for it. That's a system where we categorize problems, interventions, and outcome results. And what we are now doing is also to involve the families on the community. So there is a client portal, and patients can decide to also participate with the team and discuss about their situation. So it's also useful for families, when families live not in the same region as the, the patients, that can also be part of the network. That's the, the step we made last year. This comes. This is what we, we do. It's a bit. Uh, we call it the new software. It's a community, so a lot of nurses are sharing ideas, experiences, and I share my ideas. Uh, we have a lot of data out of the system, sharing documents, and all the necessary things for the accountability inside the system. Do the planning. Um, what we don't do, oh yeah, what we don't do. What we don't do is management <laughs> meetings. <laughs> Writing policy notes it saves a lot of time not having management meetings. And if you don't write policy notes, you don't have to discuss it. So that's, uh, strategic documents, you have a clear vision and everybody understands our vision. So that's, and of course we have sometimes changes in the system, but we avoid that changes in the system. That's that we say we don't do it. That's not, not completely right. We have certain ideas about HR, but we try to integrate it in the daily work of everybody. So, if everybody is able to uh, hire colleagues, for example, then we think you will get the best colleagues. So, year plans. Um, the end of the life of a community, of the end of the organization, doesn't end by the end of the year. So we say we should focus on continuity. Yes, and only 
focus on a certain goal when it's necessary, when it's needed. So if you find a problem in your community, try to think about what could be a good solution or could be a good uh, new innovation or something. And nobody uses things. I, I do these things a lot for managers, so that's this kind of things. This is uh, uh, how we grow, have grown. So in 2007, we had just a few teams. Uh, but we already had a, a lot of publicity in Holland because we were doing things differently than everybody else. And they, and they said, oh, that can only be done when it's small and there are just a few people. And when it's growing, they will have the same problems than any other organization. So, but it didn't happen. So, um, we got every every year we got the prize for the fast growing, fastest growing organization. So we control all over Holland. So, and I think the coming years we will even double again because these teams they grow and they split up. So when they are bigger than ten, they decide to uh, to make the, the the neighborhood smaller and they split up. So we have in, in some of the villages we have almost 90 percent of all the patients we are taking care of by by our, our organization. And my idea for the future is that this becomes just a way of working for the whole country. So a lot of other organizations are copying what we are doing. And we are also working together with them. So we're not, we're not competing, but we are working together. We have new innovations and all the time there are popping up ideas with everybody. We have youth care departments, we have domestic care, social care departments, 4,000 workers. Working in the same way, also in small teams, they have a lower education or sometimes no education, but they are very good able to also to organize it themselves. So, because some people in Holland say this can only be done by higher educated people, and it's not true. Uh, even I think if you uh, are too high educated, like you are, then it can become more complicated. Think about that. Uh, perhaps we have, can have some discussion about that. Uh, we have a part for mental care. So we have, mental care. We have pensions for rehabilitation, rehabilitation. We have hospices. And we work in closely together with physiotherapists and occupational therapists. We started in Sweden, in the US, uh, in Asia, in the UK. And there are many countries who are interested because of the uh, impacts in the healthcare system because it reduces costs and also because the demographics because you see that in a lot of countries the amount of elderly is growing and the amount of young people is decreasing so how can we be able to still for the future have enough resources to deal with all the problems then um, a lot of people have done research of course uh, you know the research from uh, Shara I think um, I think she wrote the most complete book and I was very honored that she also interviewed my mother so my mother is in the book because she was my inspiration so she, she, my mother was always thinking in solutions I said and she's always connected with everybody around her and she still she's 81 now 81 as old as this university so my mother was born when this university started. That, that's not a coincidence. So it's, uh, it's funny to see it this week how many, uh, yeah, how many connections there are. Um, so Shada described in the book that this, the, what we are doing is, is based on three principles. The leading principle, we think in principle, and the common sense principle. Um, we, can, we can discuss these things. Uh, if you like. Then uh, there is another book which also has a lot of impact. It's called uh, Re Reinventing Organizations and it's written by Frederick Malou. And you see quite the same ideas in the book. Um, it's about self-management, wholeness and evolutionary purpose. He says if you have these three principles in your organization, then you are fit for the future. So, we should think in other ways of organizing. This is not a team. Uh, we, we measure these the results. Um, 
So thousands of nurses quit their job and they started to work for us. So that was for me a big surprise that um, after 25 or 30 years working for a certain organization that just left all the certainties and started to work for, for us. Um, we measure the, what they what I like about their work, working in small teams, autonomous, independence is very important. There's, there's a very strong team spirit. If you see, every team feels responsible for their own neighborhood. They have their own office in their neighborhood and they have their own culture. So almost every team has a different culture. 850 cultures. Uh, and then the, they like the, the IT system, that it's very user friendly. And we've been uh, the best employer in, in uh, the last four or five years. And this year I think we have a big chance that we again are the best, best employer of Holland. And just, it's very simple, we, do, we don't do anything about it. But the nurses feel that they are the owners of the, of the company, not, not me. So, so I can easily go away. There's another team in the north of Holland. You can see that the teams are a bit too wide. You can choose for 400 meters, 800 meters. They get a medal and a certification. And then the most important thing is the symbol that if you focus on what people can do, they connect in another way. So they find other people who also want to exercise, but they can't do it in a normal way. So they, they find each other, they share their own uh, concerns with each other, and they find solutions together. So it's another way of dealing with handicaps and problems. And it's also very funny. So it's, you can see that everybody likes it. So it's, it's and this year it will be on the um, 7th of September. So then that will be the next rolling of it. Oh, another one. And then uh, if you look at the cost effectiveness, uh, what we see is that the overhead costs went down if you look at the average uh, organization from 25% to 8%. So you can spend the money for innovation, care, education. There is a surplus. We are a not-for-profit not organization, but there, we have the, the biggest profit. So but it's not we want to have this profit, but it's the result of what we are doing. So we are very financially a very healthy organization. And if you look at the results on a national scale, then you see that we are spending only 65% of the hours uh, compared with other organizations. So it leads to healthier people or other solutions, more independence. So um, we are working together with uh, the Dutch government and from 2007 they took our model as an example and have good connections with the Dutch Ministry of Health. And it's also the reason that we easily are in contact with other countries where also the ministries are trying to find models that are sustainable for the future. And we are at the moment, and it's very funny to see how it changed in 2007, 2008, a lot of organizations saw us competitors and were very afraid about what, what happened. But now this year us an example and we're working together. So, so I think this was this is, this is what I want to achieve. Um, when I became a nurse and I was 20, then I had this feeling that this work was very valuable and inspired inspired me to, to do this. My son is also becoming a nurse, so he's now 23 and he will also start as a nurse next year. And that's what we, I think we need to do, to inspire young people to do valuable work in a way that they can grow their whole life. So, that's, uh, so this is what I wanted to share with you. Thank you for your attention. Uh, uh, we, we also request you if uh, audience have some questions, yeah. you'd like to answer them? Please. I wish to ask how you ensure the safety of these nurses? The safety of 
What, what's the problem then? It's the same model. I think it can't be applicable in near India due to safety issues. Yeah. So if there are such cases, as in there the legal and or what kind of have you an example? Yes, I guess that's my wish. There was a coincidence of Aruna Shanbhav's case. There was a coincidence of Aruna Shanbhav's case 40 years back. Yes, the Kanye again, the movement. Yes, sir. There was an incident with the nurse who was exposed to some violence by the patient side. Did you know if you have any incident where the nurse going to a home was subjected to some kind of... Yeah, of course, it happens in homes too. Uh, there are incidents, but what you see is that there are much less incidents than in, a, in an average organization. So what we see is that um, these nurses, they have their precautions. So they know in the neighborhood they're living what the risks are. So, so for example, in Amsterdam, when they go out in the night, they think about do I need a guide or not? So then they just call the police and say, you have to go to somewhere. Would you accompany me? So there is a, a very big, um, I think, um, incentive for prevention. So they, all the nurses think ahead because it's their problem. So we, if you have protocols and regulations, then you want to follow the protocol. I say the protocol is a risk. So your own mindset and your own thoughts about how can I prevent coming into getting in trouble is much more important. And, it, and when there is an incident, we, at the moment it happens, we try to find out what's the best way to deal with it. But they are just incidents. So through, throughout the 10 years we are now existing, we didn't have any big calamities. So and, and what, what I've seen in the organizations I worked before, there were a lot of issues. And in and, and these 10 years we didn't really have one formal complaint. Because we, we served 600,000 patients and we didn't have one formal complaint. So I think that's... So I think it, it's, uh, I got a lot of these questions also in the US uh, and then it's about uh, people get sued and you know, all these kinds of things, but we don't, we don't face these problems up till now. This one has to do with the small scale of uh, yeah. activities and the neighborhoods here, so we know each other so well, mm -hmm. the social environment we know about people. So is this supported by some regulations there also? Is there, is there any regulation from the government with uh, respect to uh, such nurses? Uh, in fact, we, we changed the regulations. The, um, the regulations were focusing on protocols, procedures, and systems. And what we said is, um, you should focus more on the relations between nurses and patients. So now the inspection, the Dutch inspection, they changed the way they do inspections. So now they are going to visit patients, and they talk with the nurses. And then they look at the policy. In that order. Yes, th 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 this is a governmental institute. And they visit organizations, and then uh, you get uh, on, different, um, on different issues, you can get a s score. And the last uh, two months ago, we had this inspection, and they had the highest scores on almost everything. So they, said they were also surprised that all these nurses were so disciplined. So it's that self-organizing, that this chaos, and what they saw in these teams were that these nurses were very disciplined and very thoughtful about their daily work. Uh, Mr. Jos, I would like to ask you, uh, you mentioned that there are uh, very few formal meetings. Yeah. So uh, I reckon that you must be using the power of ICT. Uh, so have you developed uh, some apps or some kind of systems? Uh, what what way you keep uh, all of you, all the nurses and all when required, they can share the best practices among them, themselves? Yeah. No, it's, it's integrated in our web. web yeah. So we, we said, 
When we started in 2007, we had uh, common, the Facebook was coming up. Yeah. So we said we are going to all develop our own Facebook. Okay. So and, and we want that uh, nurses get used to sharing things by the internet. So so that started uh, already. I think 2008. What we saw was that uh, nurses easily ask questions to each other. So that, for example, somebody in a village had uh, this uh, very uh, specific patient with this very uh, incidental kind of disease. And it says, has anybody experience in other teams? And then four or five responses. And so we built, based on that, we also built an expert, an expert network. So we have experts on different issues and different diseases. And they just can consult them when that's needed. But it's all, it all grew quite organically. So we didn't have a policy before. We just said, when these issues arise, we do something with it. So that's, that's how it happened. And then at the moment, if you see a meeting, because the teams have meetings every week. If you, have a, if you see a meeting, they're all sitting there with their iPads, and they're, they're discussing. And, and so we have um, networks between the teams, based on um, problems of, of patients. Um, we have uh, a lot of national events also. So we have, uh, every year we have five conference days where we invite all the nurses to share and to, to join. So there are ways to, different ways to share experiences. So, so like if we compare the healthcare industry in India, it is more or less driven by the pharma companies. Like when I visit a doctor, my prescription not only depends upon my ailment, but but at the end of the month he has to, you know, he has some targets. So, do you face similar issues in internet? Um, but with, with the doctors, we, we have these kind of problems. So there are all kinds of connections with the pharmaceutical industry. But nurses are not very, um, easy to influence this way in Holland. So that's so what we say, and and you, 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 for example, what we see a lot with with wound care, wound care, uh, there are very ex expensive wound care materials, but in the the nurses themselves decides on what kind of materials they are using, and they are advising the doctors, and when the doctors are prescribing things based on the wrong agreements with pharmaceuticals, they started to discuss it. So um, we have and we have a long history where the discussions between doctors and nurses are quite equal. So and that's in different countries of course different that doctors prescribe and the nurses principles uh, rethinking principle, this continuous improvement and bringing in uh, higher consciousness uh, levels in dealing with problems, having a holistic view on uh, problem solving, and uh, the third one is common sense because you need to solve a problem. And uh, we are trying to uh, use these three concepts from uh, Indian uh, philosophy, Swat Harum, Swalamban, and Swaraj, uh, which is very closely related to you know doing doing your duties, which leads to this internal uh, freedom. What is the nurse, nurses do this uh, following uh, the resources with, which are available, which leads to some kind of the external freedom, and but it all starts with uh, Swaraj uh, knowing the higher purpose. What is it that you want to achieve as a nurse and as a company? So I feel there uh, are many connections to be made with Indian philosophy and. Uh, I would always like to invite you, if you have any cases you work on, which will en enrich our thinking for good sort, uh, to collaborate. We have been talking to some organic farmers, we have been talking to Ankoji to see uh, what is uh, available here. So I would really appreciate if we could uh, work together in that uh, enriching uh, the paradigm. Okay. Thank you, Shabdaji. And indeed, uh, as uh, 
Uh, Mr. Yoss has also pointed out uh, working and all, so we would all work together for a good cause. Uh, and uh, uh, just like Good Sog has earned a very uh, respectable image across the world for the way that we ma they manage and they have grown over the time. We wish them all the success in the time to come and even growing further. And uh, it's good that, you know, they share several things and uh, ideology common with the Banastali and uh, we look forward to working closer and uh, grow and uh, for the welfare of uh, the entire world and world in peace. So thank you all of you for attending this session and once again from on the behalf of Banastali University family we thank Bootsaw, we thank Mr. Yoss, we thank uh, Professor Shadhanandaram, we thank uh, uh, by Dr. Puniji, who was instrumental in uh, uh, making this visit possible. And uh, we, we trust that uh, you keep on coming uh, every year and uh, let's uh, keep the association going. Thank you very much. I'd like to uh, present uh, this book uh, to you.